it was close to the Sabbath. I just found out at the last minute. I was actually reluctant to go. I had people in the community pushing me saying, you should go to this event because they knew that I would open my mouth and say something. And I was a bit reluctant. I said, okay, I might as well just check it out. It's a rumor. Uh, the, the organizer of this event said, denied that the premier was coming. It was going to be some multicultural minister. But okay, I'll, I'll go and check it out. And I didn't have my phone specifically because the Sabbath was going to come in. Uh, so it wasn't really planned, spur of the moment, went in, saw him, and I was just outraged. It was just emotion. I had so much emotion because... Hey. I caught up with a local Jewish man who confronted Daniel Andrews as the Premier visited a synagogue in St Kilda East last Friday afternoon to find out why he did it. There was a rumour going around that uh, Premier Daniel Andrews was going uh, to address a certain institution on the eve of the Jewish Sabbath. And I decided to go and uh, check it out myself. I knew that this Premier was going on a charm offensive where he was throwing around bags of money at Jewish institutions in a bid to buy votes, and this is obviously taxpayers' money. On the back of that rumour, I went to this uh, institution, and sure enough, lo and behold, he was there. So this venue had a capacity to fill 200 people. There were only 25 people in that venue. So it just goes to show how despised he is amongst the Jewish community. It was 12 months ago where he terrorised the Jewish community. He terrorised the Ausa children, he shut down our synagogues, he sent the right police, he sent police on horseback, and it was done under the guise of science and keeping us safe. And less than a kilometre away, he allowed sporting events to go ahead. There was an indoor sp a sporting match, a, a boxing match with close to 100 people, a horse racing uh, event as well. Uh, you knew about it because you were there, you were reporting on how he laid siege to a certain synagogue, trapping uh, worshippers inside. And uh, it was mentioned in your report that it was reminiscent of something that happened in Europe 70, 80 years ago. It's not something that you would expect to happen in Australia. It's like a jackal and hide personality. Now he wants to buy our votes and uh, he's going around and he's throwing bags of money. So I waited, I listened to his speech, deliberately waited till he got to the announcement how he was going to fund a, this certain organisation. He was going to buy them a new kitchen or renovate a kitchen and he was going to give a grant for another, uh, some other uh, projects within that organisation. People were clapping and cheering. So it was like, I'm, I'm from communist Russia, and it reminded me of being at a communist Politburo meeting where everyone's dutifully clapping. So it was a very surreal scene, and that's when I decided to interrupt. You can't buy us all out. We'll never forget when we have to bust out of here. Hey. You can't buy us all out. Sir. We won't forget what we did for us last year. We'll have to say all that. His taxpayers' money is not your money. You're smashing around. As a state, we've accumulated $170 billion dollars in debt, that's more than the combined total debt of Queensland, New South Wales, and Tasmania. So it's not his money to just splash around just so he can buy votes and, and campaign. I think that, by the way, that should be illegal, uh, using taxpayers' money for election campaigning. And he's notorious for doing that. In the democratic society, people are free to simply have a view doesn't with mine. Ironically, Andrews made that seemingly pro-democratic point as Leon was being dragged away by security for expressing his view. The Premier says he's free to have. I did get messages after it. One saying, Avi, why weren't you there? <laughs> Two, as in, thank goodness somebody stood up to him. But why? Why did you do it? If it wasn't for a political sum because you didn't film it and you didn't plan for it to be filmed and somebody just happened to capture a few seconds badly of it, what was the benefit? The benefit was giving him a clear message that we are not accepting your bribes. You're not going to buy us out. And I think he got the message. So as I said, the, the event was carefully staged, choreographed. It was uh, designed to benefit him and the candidate who's running in Caulfield. I wanted to make a strong message to tell him, first of all, you're not welcome here. We will not forget what you did to us. We're not going to accept your blood money. I saw what he did to our community. I saw it firsthand. And I watched your report as well, and you were the only reporter on the ground that was objectively reporting on it. So I experienced it. Uh, it was 
not something that I expected to see in Australia. It actually pushed me to run to in this election for the UAP. So obviously you say, you know, what happened in the last couple of years, especially the shutting down of synagogues, the siege on a synagogue during the holiest days on the Jewish calendar. That's what encouraged you to run. Why the UAP? The United Australia Party is not just, doesn't just believe in small government. We're also a conservative party. We believe in traditional values in God, uh, in family. And obviously we support businesses, small taxes. So that re platform really resonates with me. How do you feel the response from the Jewish community is to you running? Overall, it's positive. It's been very positive. So I'm getting a lot of support from people. People are very enthusiastic. They're on fire. A lot of people want to, are willing to help me and vol volunteer their own time to help me and also donate to me. We haven't so, seen many people that look like you that do run. There's, uh, there's got to be a handful over the, probably the history of elections in Victoria. Do you think that that helps to come from the community or is, it, do you, is there other barriers you need to break to get to the wider community outside the religious community? I think people in the wider community, this is my sense, are hungry. They need, especially with the lockdowns, how they were shut down, they're isolated, and they're looking for truth. And they're looking for, they want to return back to the traditional values. They want to turn to God. That's what I'm sensing in the wider community, not just the Jewish community, for what, as a result of what they've experienced. And they're looking for authenticity. So I don't think that what I represent is going to be a barrier on the contrary. I think uh, I'll have a lot to offer and it, I think it resonates. Well, I'm confident that it will resonate with a lot of people. If you enjoyed this report, make sure to like, comment, and most importantly, share it far and wide because we know that the mainstream media won't give Lynn a fair go. Then head over to followrv.com, subscribe to the mailing list, join me across socials, and support my work at Rebel, followavi.com.